Last week, uh, the publishing company for our textbook, uh, in conjunction with the AP College Board, put out a 10 tips for the AP stat test pertaining just to 2020, because we have a new format for the test. So this is very timely. This is not just a uh, 10 tips for the last 20 years uh, for the test, but they're, these are specifically just to 2020. So that's one reason why I sent you all a link to the video. Uh, those of you that missed the video, it's an hour long. I will put a link to that hour long video in the description of this video. Uh, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview. I, I went ahead and watched it and uh, I just took screenshots of the 10 tips and I'm gonna just scroll through them uh, in a few minutes here. Um, but if you want to watch the video, it has uh, three different presenters in there, and it's got a sales pitch of some materials for teachers in the very beginning, but I'm going to try to give you the nitty gritty here. And uh, so I don't think I'm going to do it justice, but just so that you guys can see uh, some big picture, uh, big picture things to keep in mind for your test coming up in five days. Alrighty, so uh, tip number 10 is you've got to talk the talk. The nice thing is here, you, you don't even have to walk the walk. You just have to talk the talk. You just have to talk a good game. You don't even have to walk it. Um, watch your language here. So you're going to want to be very, very, um, you don't want to incriminate yourself by misusing terms in the wrong context. Many multiple choice questions are wrong because they, they misuse notation or they misuse vocabulary terms in the wrong way. So the reason why those uh, multiple choice questions are so sinister and diabolical is because <laughs> there is a lot of truth to them, but there's usually something very um, subtle in there that's incorrect. So what you don't wanna do is use a term in the wrong context. You don't wanna use symbols in the wrong way. So even though there aren't any multiple choice questions on this year's exam, I would definitely do some multiple choice questions from our textbook in the cumulative reviews because they, they will fine tune your notation and your vocabulary. Um, but if you, if you need to, go ahead and pause this uh, video and read through the bullets in this slide here. Um, there's a difference between P and P hat. That's a proportion of the population and that's a proportion of the sample and then of course there's capital P which is the p-value <laughs> which is the probability so uh, be sure to watch your P's and Q's and your X bars and your and your means there your muse um, so if you're gonna here's a good one here avoid using confounding biased and skews as a synonym for a bad measure, okay? You don't want to, if it's bad, you're gonna say bad, all right? Uh, you don't want to use the word compounding. All right, going on to number 10 here, number nine. If I were you, a lot of you don't have printers at home because you are you think, oh, it's the 21st century, why do we need hard copy? When you're taking this test here, you're not gonna to wanna to be having multiple tabs open. You may not even be able to have multiple tabs open if you're taking the AP test so I would print out the formula sheets and the tables. Have those handy. Tape them on your, tape them on your wall. Have a hard copy. Don't try to have them up on your phone and then your Chromebook open and then another a iPad open. You're you know scrambling between the, you know pinching and dragging and enlarging uh, screens and trying to find uh, Z scores and whatnot. That's just that's no fun. So I would have the formula sheets handy. Print them out. Make sure your calculator is charged. AAA batteries, <laughs> have those handy, okay? And then have your location, uh, a, you know, time and place. Uh, right now I'm filming this in a glass room uh, in my house, and my kids know that when I have the sliding glass door shut, they are not to come in. They are to call my wife or call 911 if there's an emergency. <laughs> But if I'm in here, they know to leave me alone, and the dog can't come in here and bother me. So if you have pets at home that are going to distract you, have a nice, secure location. Um, plan it. Tell people in advance where you're going to be, and uh, you don't want to be haggling with people in the middle of the task to leave you alone, okay? And 
I would try not to use your cell phone, have that, you know, you don't want Twitter to be going off if you guys still use Twitter or Instagram. You don't want to be telling your friends, oh, I'm taking an AP test, or you don't want to be dealing with your phone. So just make sure you set yourself up for success and you cannot afford distractions. You have 45 minutes to do this AP test this year, okay? So do what you can ahead of time to put yourself in a really good position to not waste these precious minutes on shutting the dog up, getting your little sister out of your room, those kinds of things. Um, so I, I'd say this is a big one, okay? This is a big one. Number eight, um, I apologize a couple of weeks ago, I said that there are gonna be five frappies. There's really only two. There's two free response questions and uh, they're gonna give you one question at a time, 25 minutes is the first one and you'll have five minutes to upload your, your work, your scratch work. And then question number two, you'll have 15 minutes. So I'm guessing they are gonna be um, free response questions, obviously that's what it says, but they're gonna be multiple parts, maybe eight or nine parts to each question and anywhere from probability to inference all the way down to describe the distribution, which means you gotta remember your socks. When they say describe the distribution, you're not gonna use your own vocabulary, you're gonna be using, you know, socks. Spread, outliers, spread, I already said that one, spread, center, <coughs> and shape, okay? Number nine. Um, this is a big one here. I would definitely practice with your technology. Do a test run. So if you need to pause this and read through the bullets, do that. Seven, know your inference. Okay. Um, in the last couple months in this class, I've been trying to teach you guys remotely how to do four different hypothesis testing. Okay, we got a one sample P, a one sample for mu, a two sample for P, two sample for mu. Okay, that's chapters uh, section 9-2, section 9-3, section 10-1, and section 10-2. Those are inference tests, okay? They, they are taking off chi-square this year, uh, and there's actually three different chi-square tests. And then there's a test for regression. So there usually is about 10 inference tests, this test is really going to primarily focus on four. Um, confidence intervals are not a hypothesis test, but you can make inferences based upon confidence intervals. But we're really focusing on um, those four that I mentioned at the beginning. Two sample and one sample, two of each type. I'm guessing they're going to address at least two of those. And what you don't want to do is read the question and try to figure out what type of hypothesis test it is. Wouldn't it be nice if you read the question and within 15 seconds you know that it is a two-sample test for means? That right there, you can look at your uh, formula sheet. You can have that handy. You can get your, um, your conditions ready because there's lots of conditions and you don't want to be using the wrong conditions in the wrong context. That is not good. There's a little applet that this dude named Larry Green uh, put out that um, I will put a link to that in the description of this as well. And what you do is you just check the inference uh, situations you want and then it randomly generates scenarios and it asks you to identify the setting. That's all you're doing. You're not doing a full-blown hypothesis test. All you're doing is saying this is this type of test and I heard from Josh Tabor, who was on the committee for this test. He said you're most likely this year not going to be doing a full-blown state plan do conclude for any of the test questions. But you may be, for example, just do the conclusion. They may give you the test statistic, the T, the T value, and they may give you the P value and just ask you to make a conclusion. Or they may ask you to just state the hypotheses. So be prepared to do any one of these four uh, things. You may not be able to have to do all four steps because, as you know, a hypothesis test alone, sometimes the questions take 10 minutes to get through. Uh, it may just ask you to check a condition. So be prepared to just do one part of that. All right. 
Do not give a naked answer. Don't just say, my answer is, my p-value is 0.04. Make sure you always interpret your answers in context. We've been harping at it uh, all year long. Hopefully the textbook has trained you to not only give the correct numerical answer, but make uh, explanations in context, okay? Three, focus on statistical thinking, okay? Um, this year, don't worry about calculator techniques like binom, CDF, PDF, all those kinds of things. Uh, just focus on interpretation of your answers. That's what they're most concerned with this year, not number crunching. Um, be able to interpret things and apply them and make conclusions and have meaning to your answers rather than just calculating things, okay? So I, I have a hunch you're gonna be given a lot of numerical answers and you're gonna to have to uh, interpret. Don't write too much, okay? Only do what's being asked to do, okay? So answer the question in context and then move on. Don't argue with the question writers. Apparently in the past, they've had uh, notes written to the questions saying, you know, how can you collect a sample of uh, 710 ducks? You know, how, how can you sample their, their, the length of their calls? Don't talk about the validity of the question. I don't think that's going to be a problem um, unless you guys want to be argumentative for argumentative sake, but uh, just don't do that. Two, read the question, answer the question. Okay. Make sure you read the question, because sometimes uh, in our textbook, they'll itemize, they'll say part A, find the answer, interpret the answer. However, you're not gonna be itemized, you're not gonna have things itemized for you necessarily. It may ask you in a narrative format, find and interpret, find and interpret, okay? So in that case, a lot of students, they go ahead and find the answer, but then they don't interpret it. So don't rely upon being asked itemized in an itemized fashion to find the answer. Part two, interpret the answer. It may be written to find and interpret, so make sure you answer both parts um, of the question, okay? So even though the question may be numbered question number one, within question number one, you may be asked to find and justify or uh, find and explain the difference. So make sure you read the question and circle each little task that they ask you to do. Don't rely upon the numbering. And the last one here, which I think they just threw this in here to make it an even 10, but uh, be prepared and confident, okay? Uh, that encompasses all previous one, uh, two through 10. <laughs> um, in our textbook, there are four different cumulative, cumulative tests. Uh, you're not going to do the fourth one because the fourth one includes uh, chi-square, but focus on numbers one through three. Statmedic, that program that I assigned to you guys this year, was created this year specifically for this test. A great resource. Continue that. I would not go to Khan Academy. I'm not going to explain why. And it just has too much. You guys are going to be weeding through a bunch of stuff. And then the AP Classroom, um, I haven't assigned any more from there. Uh, so, if you want a full video of this, look in the description of this video, and then I'll also put a, a link to the applet for the uh, confidence interval tests, or the hypothesis testing scenarios. Good luck, kids.